Hello everybody, it's me Major Craft, and today we are looking at how to plan, design and execute large builds. And by large builds I mean uh, as large as this uh, building behind me. This is a cathedral that I did a couple of years ago. Uh, it was built in survival so as you can see it's mostly stone uh, and simple blocks but uh, if you're doing this in creative or with a bit more time you can make things much jazzier. But what we're going to be doing in this video is uh, one, we're going to be doing a tutorial so that if you want to build uh, this cathedral for yourself uh, in all its glory uh, you will be able to follow along and complete it for yourself. Also, as I am going along, I'm going to be revealing to you uh, how I plan a building as large as this, uh, what I think about, uh, what tips and tricks I've got to make uh, these things look uh, realistic and uh, pleasing to the eye, and how you can execute them in Minecraft, which is sometimes a little trickier than it at first seems. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So, I would class this uh, cathedral as a fairly large build it is. Uh, the building alone is about 70 blocks by 100 blocks uh, long. It is a big build, it has a lot of blocks in it and took an enormous amount of time to make. And if you're here wondering, uh, Major, how on earth do you do that? Well, this video is for you. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about uh, the steps. And obviously the first step really is to get inspiration. So I would recommend getting onto Google and starting to search up some images of uh, pictures of things, uh, buildings uh, that inspire you, that, that you want to aim for. They don't need to be exact uh, versions of what you're trying to build, just things to give you inspiration. So for example, uh, this build here uh, was a little bit um, uh, based on uh, Notre Dame here at the front with the uh, spires. Uh, and at the back uh, here we replaced this middle part with uh, a dome, a little bit more like uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, and so uh, this isn't just a carbon copy of uh, an already existing building, it takes inspiration from lots of different buildings. But once you've got inspiration, then you need to plan. And you can also get help with this plan by uh, searching up floor plans. Because, uh, for example, uh, uh, this cathedral is a really good example, there are loads of floor plans of uh, existing cathedrals that you can look at uh, on Google. Uh, I'm going to stick some up on the screen to show you and they help you to figure out what should go where. Most buildings have some kind of rules and structure to them and uh, a cathedral is a perfect example of this. So uh, after I did that, the next step is to map this out in the Minecraft world. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the floor plan uh, that eventually will become uh, this build here. Uh, and what we can see is uh, the main outer walls and if you were to go inside, you'll find these supporting pillars uh, inside. And then at the back, we have a semicircular uh, section to make things slightly different, slightly interesting. It looks kind of funky, uh, my little robot uh, build at the moment. Uh, it will start to make sense uh, and we'll show you uh, the real thing to help you. As you can see here, we have these uh, pillars here that are... Uh, sections of three by three, which you can see over here are represented by the red blocks. And in between those sections is the walls or walls with windows in them there. So we have three by three pillar, section for a wall, three by three pillar, section for a wall, and a three by three pillar. And that happens all the way around the build, as you can see, just like that. And then uh, on the inside, we have, let's go down here, and in the door, we have lots of pillars uh, here. Now, ignore these uh, cobble uh, walls here. What we're looking at is these main uh, pillars here that are following the same three by three structure. And you'll see there's two rows of them, one along this side and one along this side. And they go all the way down the length of the church until we get to the very center. And then we have them going out towards the side entrances uh, like that and then a few more coming this way into the uh, semicircular area at the front of the church. So let's have a look at what that looks like again on our plan to help you visualize uh, what I mean by that. So now that you've seen the actual finished build, it all started 
from this. I actually uh, did a little sketch, uh, which I will pop on the screen now to show you just to, as a rough idea of what I wanted and use that uh, to map out the floor of my build. And as you can see, we've got the uh, columns coming down here and around here and down to the semicircular area. So once you've done this, you are finally ready to start building. I suppose I should mention as well that there is a reason for the positioning of those columns uh, inside of the church and to see that we can look on the outside. It's really handy actually uh, not only to get floor plans but to see if you can get cross sections of buildings. So for example uh, this is a cross section of uh, a cathedral design that I found on the internet and I've used this to understand how the structures work. So as you can see we have uh, this uh, kind of stepped ceiling, uh, uh, stepped roof rather. So we have a, a section coming up here, that's the outer wall, as you can see, and then a roof that goes in, and then another pillar here. And that happens all the way around the build. You've got the outer wall here, uh, that goes halfway up the build. Then we've got another roof, and then another wall here that goes up to the secondary roof. And those pillars are actually what's supporting this wall here. Because in real life, if you built a big solid wall like that, uh, with nothing underneath it, it would fall straight down. So it needs those pillars underneath that go down here, right down, uh, to hold all of that structure up. And it's that uh, knowledge of how buildings work that helps you to design a building that looks right. Um, because obviously, uh, if you did it without understanding uh, how the structure stays up and is supported, it wouldn't look realistic inside and out. This looks realistic because each of these pillars is holding things up uh, as if gravity were real. Obviously, this is Minecraft and gravity isn't real, uh, but it helps your builds to look much more authentic. A couple of tips while you're laying out the foundation here, uh, you'll see that we've got different lengths of wall sections in between each of the pillars. Uh, now, uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, it's good to have some variety, um, so not everything is exactly the same. So as you'll see, we've got uh, two sets of doors with a section in the middle. The doors, uh, including their surrounds, are five in width. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then this middle section is actually three wide. And that's just to give some variety uh, and some difference because otherwise it looks too, uh, uh, I don't know if monotonous is the right word, but uh, you need that variety to make it look a bit more interesting to the eye. Uh, the reason as well that we're looking for uh, most of these being odd numbers is because uh, on this we want arched windows and arched windows are going to need a one block in the middle. So you'll notice on the front here, these windows are five wide. So one, two, three, four, five, so that we can go up to a single point in the middle. Uh, you will notice that uh, on here, it's a little bit different. Uh, we've got uh, even numbered spaces. They're not actually even numbered spaces. Uh, when you actually look at the build, if you ignore this here, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the actual wall uh, is actually uh, this long. And we just put an extra uh, pillar support in here, which we will uh, understand why that's there when we actually build it. Uh, but there are occasions when we make slightly wider uh, spaces that go wider than our five. For example, here on the side entrances, we have seven blocks so that we can have uh, a decorative wall, the frame of the door, and then at least three uh, a wide entrance. Or if you want, you can put the uh, side of the door and then a five wide entrance if you want. I think five's a little bit too big. As you can see, all of my doors on the front and on the sides are all uh, three wide. I think much bigger and it starts to look very odd indeed. As you can see, three wide. So effectively what we're using is the size of our doors or the size of our windows as a unit of measurement to figure out how uh, spaced apart these need to be. So now that we're ready to build, the first thing we are going to do is uh, we're going to start with these small sections here. If you can see, there's a one, two, three uh, height of a sort of base wall before we start building the first window. The first window is not at uh, the, uh, the 
very bottom of the building, uh, especially in these big buildings, uh, they tends to be a, a bit of a raise before you get that first window. So we're going to put that in all the way around. So first things first, we're going to come to each one of our red uh, supporting pillars and build three up uh, all the way around. And this is going to take a while if you're doing a big build. You're going to have to get used to a lot of repetition. Uh, but once we've done that, what we can start doing is working on these sections here. And we're going to make an example with our first one in the middle here. So let's just pop these up. And uh, then we're going to do this middle section here. This is a door. This is a door. And then this is the middle section in between the doors, as you can see here. Door, door, and then middle section. And what we do is we're going to take our stone and build the wall up here at the back. And then what we have is... Uh, two blocks of width to put some detailing in uh, to make the build look more uh, as if it has more depth and more detail and more interest. So what I did here was to place a, a cobble block and then a couple of stairs in front of it. I'm going to put a stair block to the side like that and then I bridged all the way across with a slab and then not on this layer, but on the layer in front of it here, I put uh, these uh, slabs here like that. Uh, so as you can see, it starts to give us that idea of depth and detail and interest. And we're going to repeat that section uh, or something similar to it along every single wall section here that doesn't contain a door. So we've done that small three section. We're going to do these five uh, wide walls here. They work uh, almost exactly the same uh, at the uh, inner a uh, bit of this here in line with the the back of the pillars we put in our stone and then we're going to pop in blocks there stair blocks and this time we're going to put a stair block in there and in there as well and then we put in the upturned ones there and there and then take your slabs across the top like that and then the smooth stone slab to finish off uh, just like that i've also taken that out and popped in a little andesite slab just to finish off the detail. As you can see, it works exactly the same as that, only just a little bit wider. One other small thing of note is this weird section here, which if you see on the other side, uh, might be a confusing. There is actually one pillar here and then one pillar here with a one uh, space in between. Uh, so all we do is put in that stone back, uh, pop in a cobble block and your stairs and then you can pop in your slabs after and that just works just to bridge that gap basically because I wanted a nice wide entrance for those big side doors. I could have moved that whole pillar one that way and made a five entrance but that wasn't big enough. I wanted a nice big seven entrance so that's why that happened there. Now that we got that foundation layer in, next we're going to start working on these side towers and we're going to do the windowed portions here first all the way up to this line because it's really straightforward and it's just a repeating pattern on these uh, sections here, one, two, three, four, five and six. Uh, so all that is, is on this layer in the middle here above your cobble, we're going to start with this polished andesite, put a row in. And we're going to count nine up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to come in one. Get rid of that. We're going to do a two and then a one. And then obviously do the exact same thing on the other side, like so. Then you can finish off with an upside down stair block in there. And that's all we're going to do. And we take our... Uh, stone bricks and just level that out like so and then we're going to put two more layers on top super super simple just like that and we are going to do the exact same thing all over again now above that one more time so uh, five across and then one two three four five six seven eight nine two and one and then finish on the other side just like we did in the first layer what we come to here and then two up and pop in your upside down stone blocks and then all we need to do is finish off same again with your stone bricks up to the level and then two more up just like that and that is the section you're looking for. 
And this is how the system with these uh, three by three pillars works. Now, as you can see, the actual wall itself sits in between and then you can build up these pillars either side uh, all the way up and you can see what happens is it's framed either side so it looks the same on this side and then if you do the same thing on this side from the inside it also looks exactly the same. This works for smaller buildings and much larger buildings. It's a really handy way of making sure that your builds look uh, good on the inside and on the out uh, using that symmetry inside and out like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete this on that side, on there, there, there and there. And then we will have the tower built up, obviously bringing all of your pillars up to the same height. Also, you may be wondering why there's that gap in there and that looks weird. All I did on our original build and I will do here is I've taken something with a slightly different color just to uh, break up that gray of the stone brick and just filled in the exact center of each pillar. Now, obviously that goes for the same for all of the pillars all the way around the build. So I'm not gonna say that again. That's what we do to fill in each of these uh, supporting pillars. Now, as you can see, we have got all of those in. We don't need to put a section here because this is inside of the building. So uh, as we're walking through the door here, you can come into the tower from this angle. Uh, but there is one extra thing that we're going to do, and it is going to be putting an upper window here. Now, we don't need a lower one because this is going to come up to about here. And then we're going to have that first sloped roof to here and then it will go up a bit further but we do need the second one in so all we're going to do is at the height of your uh, solid stone brick here we can add in one more window so it's one two three four and five and two layers of that just exactly like it is there and then one more window up and there you go once we've done that we're going to need one more of our three by three pillars which we can add in here uh, simply uh, by doing a three by three square here and then we can build up from there all the way up to exactly the same height just like we did before and that will mean that uh, at the top of these towers we have all of our one two three four five six seven eight pillars to make the full square so for our detailing on these walls, what we're going to do is we're going to build out an extra bit of archway here to stop this being one solid uh, flat surface, which is what we don't want when we're detailing. So we're going to come in with some more stone brick here. And where there's these two layers of stone brick, we're just going to add another layer out like that. And then once we've done that, we're going to go in one more in each of those corners. And then we're going to grab some stairs. We're going to do some outward facing ones there and sideways ones there, just like that. And that's the basic detail and just to give that element of depth. And then down here, if you want as well, you can pop in some just like that. And that is our detailing. Again, just like we've done before, we're going to repeat that on every single window. We've got a bit of depth happening here now, but it's still not looking quite like these. There are two more elements that we need. And one is these buttresses here. And the other is these uh, little uh, stuck out ridges here, ledges, uh, sort of like window ledges, I suppose. But they go all the way around the building uh, at the uh, in between the windows at both heights. So we're going to pop them in first and uh, super simple. We're just going to get our slabs. And again, on these two layers of stone bricks on the top of the top ones at this level here. So just underneath the, the windows just like we did here, exactly the same there and then there. And we're going to take these all the way around the building at the same level here and then up at the top. Uh, and it's a bit easier to spot here. It's just the very top of our build as it is. Of course, on your middle layer here where we've got this floating windowsill, uh, we aren't going to go completely all the way around. We are really going to stop here and this is where the the roof's going to start happening so we'll deal with that later for now we're just going to do uh, around here and we're going to stop uh, wherever our windows stop like so 
And then next we're going to come in with our uh, stone brick stairs and we're going to go, uh, we're going to leave half gap and go here with them underneath and exactly the same as before, wherever there's a slab underneath the slab, we're going to pop an upside down stair block all the way around uh, the middle and all the way around the top. You can also, wherever you have these uh, pillars uh, and the slabs behind the slab, you can pop in a block so it just uh, fills up that gap here. You can see otherwise it just looks a bit floaty and weird because there's a big gap there. So I would just go in and pop them all the way around where the slabs are just to fill them up. Now you might be wondering why we've left a gap with nothing in it here, uh, but that is just to make the tutorial a little bit more straightforward. Eventually when we've got the roof on, we will have this section here that isn't a window, it's actually uh, a doorway into the staircase in these towers here. But we will do that uh, when we've got the roof on just to make things a bit more straightforward to follow. But our last job is these buttresses and you will notice that uh, the uh, they go up in steps, um, so that it's too thick at the bottom and then one thick and then no thick, if you like, if that's a word. Uh, but you'll notice that the heights of these are slightly uh, different. We've tried to find roughly thirds on this instead of halves because the windows chop this in half, but the buttresses chop this in uh, distance from here to here into thirds and that is because uh, just like we were talking about with our widths we want to vary them slightly so have fives and then threes and then occasional sevens uh, in width to give some variety the same happens with the heights of things if you'll notice we've got uh, a third of the height there half of the height there and then uh, this roof happens a bit lower than this roof which means the apex comes a little bit above that so you've got these stepped layers throughout the building uh, that aren't all lined up and that gives a bit more interest to the eye and that principle works across the entire of the build if you'll notice even these roof sections here it might be tempting to just make the one uh, same height here and then same height coming out here but just having that difference of uh, roof height there to there to there just gives it more visual interest and again if you look that goes all the way up to here now they're not quite matching they're closely matched here uh, at the top but they are not perfectly matched just to give variety so let's build them up now we need to get our stone bricks again and uh, not in the doorway we're going to do that separately but starting off here uh, we're going to go uh, up nine first two three four five six seven eight nine and then we're going to go up ten here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then what i've done is i have capped them off with the nether brick stairs here we go you can use honestly whatever colors and whatever styles you like i just pick them for a little bit of variety to break up the stone brick there uh, as with everything here use your imagination with your palette you can use uh, different blocks this build was done in i think 1.14 and since then we've had loads more interesting uh, gray structural blocks uh, with the andesite the the diorite uh, and such uh, so go ahead and mix it up, use different blocks, uh, make that interesting. So as you can see, that's one buttress done on one side of our 3x3 three three pillar. We're just going to move around to the front side of our 3x3 three three pillar and do exactly the same thing again. So we're going to go uh, 9 up first, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight nine ten obviously it becomes easier once you've done one you just mirror them along really straightforward so that's one pillar done and we're just going to go all the way around uh, doing this one this one and around and this one and this one and around we're going to do this one here but then here we're going to be doing something different so don't worry about this one now the last thing that we're going to do for this episode is we're going to do this uh, middle piece of the front facade obviously if we can do one side we just duplicate that over but the middle bit uh, is slightly different and we're going to talk through uh, again how it was designed and uh, what the basic structure is behind it so that you can understand what's happened here and although this looks very different as you've got door section small window section and then this 
uh, wall section. Actually, there is some measurement here. You'll notice that it's split into three sections. So that's eight blocks high to here, the length of the door, eight blocks high to here, and then another eight blocks high to here where the roof starts. So uh, these sections are split into exactly uh, three eight block high pieces. So we're going to come back to our uh, build here and we're going to come to these here where our entrances are. We're not building on the uh, gap in between this time. We're going to go one back here and this is where we're going to build four, five, six, seven, eight and then across like that to make our doorways just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way up now uh, to uh, we said another eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then another eight again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how high we're gonna go on both sides, just to give us a bit of an idea where we're going. And there we go. That's what we're gonna be working on. So our middle section here is actually uh, two archways, one in front of the other to get that depth. As you can see here, the two blocks outward of detail in a similar way that we did around the top of the windows here. And these are just uh, two, one, one. And then here is two and two. And you can't see, but obviously a one there for the middle. So let's do uh, this one first, which is a two and a one and a one. And that starts above here. So find the lintel and then two up. So there, because you're gonna have your steps in there and then we're going to go two one and one just like that i hope by now it goes without saying but where we've got these three by threes here we're just going to bring these up all the way up to the top here as well because that's how we're going to be separating all these walls out it's really very simple once you start to see the patterns in the way that I design these big builds, uh, the logic starts to make some more sense. So on top of our first arch, what we're going to do is build up the wall above it, just like we did here. And we're going to go up five blocks here. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And then fill that in the whole way across. And then what we can do is put in our next layer here in front of it. I forgot to mention as well, we're going to put in our upturned stair blocks in here and here, and then one facing this way here. And then what we're going to do is our next one will start on the top one of these two here. We're going to pop in an upside down stair there, and this time we're going to go two up, and then we can pop in another upside down stair and two up again. and. That's our archway. And in fact, I actually used a different block here just to make a point of difference. I used one of these chiseled stone bricks and popped it in there. And obviously, once you've done that, just like we did on the inner one, we just fill them up all the way to here. And when you've got funny things like this, it's worth just popping them out and making them solid. But that's the detail of the second section of eight, obviously filling in uh, the window, which we will do later. I've just had a quick look at my original and actually I didn't put it there, I put it there and then popped in an upside down stair block there. And then when you've got these gaps here, it looks a little bit strange because these arches look like they're floating. Then what you need to do is fill in these channels here. So we're just going to take the underside blocks and pop them in either side all the way up just to fill in that doorway. And all of a sudden they look like they're being supported properly, don't they? And you can walk through this doorway and it looks right. So we need to do the top third uh, section here, which is really quite straightforward. As you can see, we've got this layer here, which uh, as you can see on our finished version, goes all the way across the front. So we can start that now. We'll bring our upturned, uh, oops, there we go. Steps just like that, a bit finickety, but you get the idea across and we'll stop there just for now. And you can also bring your uh, stone slabs across just like that and we'll stop there for now and then what we're going to do is build the last bit on top of the stone slabs here uh, so all that will look like is uh, bringing up a middle pillar like so 
uh, up to this level. And I realized as well, uh, we actually needed to go one higher. So if you want to raise those all up one extra, that's actually the height that we need to go to. And then here, we're going to put in two layers of stone bricks like that. And we're going to do that across the middle as well, because uh, that goes across the whole of the front. And then we can start to put in our detailing, which is just upturned steps there to make the arch windows and the same at the bottom like so. And then as you can see, it's hollow at the moment. You need to fill that in. So we'll come in this time with the stone uh, just to vary up the texture. Uh, so it's not all stone brick. This, uh, that mixture of stone and stone brick helps just break things up. If you have too much stone brick, it does start getting a bit too monotonous. So there you go. That's the detailing that we're looking for. Ooh, got a bit of a wobble on my mouse there. And then we need to do this middle section here as well. So all we're going to do to begin with is we are going to go in the middle section here and we're going to fill the entire thing up with stone right the way to the top. Uh, and then we'll start uh, layering on the detail in front of it and we'll knock the windows out as we go. So first things first, as I said, we're going to bring this ledge all the way across, making that just uh, wrap around these pillars like that. Uh, and then the exact same thing with your uh, steps, bring them in like so. And they just follow the path of the pillars there. Just like that and then you can uh, pop in uh, here we leave a one gap put in some upside down and a slab in there and then one two three four for a window then we can count one two three and one two three four for another window and then one two three and then there should be room for one more three high window just like that and then what we're going to do is the way we did that here uh, we could actually pop in some steps there as well if you wanted and then under here we're going to do the exact same shape as that again but just right here like so and to frame this window at the bottom we're going to just come here like so and pop them in the right way up this time uh, leave a gap of one and then frame the bottom window with the upturned version like so and pop in a couple at the bottom to finish it off and there you go there is your uh, middle section complete folks i apologize as i've been building up that other side and in comparing against the original i realized that actually we were right the first time and this is one too high uh, so uh, that's not too hard to fix i hope it's not too inconvenient for you guys but uh, it probably will cause us problems with the roof if we don't fix that now so bring it one down and then if you want you can fix the detailing here uh, to be one lower really simple uh, just to go in and pop in a layer there it's going to come out and pop in a layer there out there and there and then we can pop in the detailing just like before and this window actually is one lower so if we take out one there and one there then we can just pop in that detail exactly as it was before and we should be fixed with uh, not a lot of effort uh, there we go and then exactly the same on the other side and everything should be tickety boo there so now we have the full uh, front and we just need to figure out what's happening at the top and that's really simple we're just going to take uh, some andesite and here at the level of the top we're just going to go one out and all the way across the front just like that and then as you can see we put in this uh, shape here on the end gable of the uh, roof which uh, starts two blocks out if i'm correct let's just check that before we uh, do anything yet yeah, two blocks out so we count one two and then here we're going to put two high and then we'll bring the bottom line all the way along here till let's see Yeah, there and two up there. So 
So then once we've got this, we want to go up here and go up like this. It's a little bit fiddly, but it will make sense uh, when we see the actual slant of the roof that this is going to attach to uh, like that up two at a time uh, in a diagonal until you meet in the middle at your apex. In a nutshell, folks, that's the front section of this uh, design all done. Obviously, you can go in and fill in all of the windows. I used the iron bars. This is entirely personal preference. I'm sure some of you will love going in and giving a stained glass feel with some glass panes. You do you on that one uh, and have some fun with it. Uh, obviously, we can pop them in there as well. Uh, when we come to doing the interior detailing, we will make that make a bit more sense on the inside. Uh, fill in all of the windows uh, in your towers as well, uh, all the way around uh, with your own designs. And then uh, that's it. We will fill in the inside of the end gable here when we actually start putting the roof in because it's a little bit easier uh, to fill in. Obviously, I'm going to have to duplicate uh, this over to the other side and then in the next episode guys what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the side walls we're going to start putting in here and here and in the the side entrances uh, and starting to make sense of these uh, buttresses here uh, what they call flying buttresses uh, these things here uh, where the pillars come up and then the supports come up in arches that meet like that and that happens all the way along here and all the way along this wall as well. So that's what uh, we're going to be doing in the next episode. We will build up these side walls, hopefully fill out the side entrances, and we can start to look at filling in this roof uh, structure as well. So that's where we finish for today. As you can see, I've duplicated that over to the side and we have got our front face uh, looking good. Uh, I know it probably feels like we haven't done a lot, but the, the rest is going to fly up quite quickly as we move around to the sides and the side doors. Uh, we should have a recognizable building by the end of next episode. So please do subscribe so that you can uh, get all of the other uh, episodes in this build and uh, all of future builds as well. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.